Okay, as you guys can see, we are doing the DDV Mic D3 Pro. Quite a name. By the way, we are gonna use this microphone throughout the entire uh, video. We'll cover how to use it as well as whether or not this mic is worth buying. Let's get right into it. All right, so this microphone actually comes with a case, which is pretty interesting because most microphones I've gotten in the past, which um, don't come with this. So it's a decent case, but I pretty much never use it, but it's nice if you want to travel, I suppose. So in terms of setup, the DD mic is very simple to set up. It has a hot shoe mount to that. All you gotta do is spin the wheel and then slide it in your camera's hot shoe mount. And then from there, you just gotta tighten it. And there's actually two sort of screw-like things. The top one is for moving the microphone like either closer to you or further from you, which I think is pretty cool because most microphones, uh, camera mounted microphones have only one that I see. And as you can see, there is a shock mount on the DD mic as well. And all you gotta do is plug in the TRS cable that it comes with into the DD mic as well as into your camera. And from there, just hold the button at the top until you see a green light on the left side. And then that's how you know it's on. So the DD mic also comes with a high pass filter. You can turn this on by clicking the top button. Just press it once to turn on the 75 Hertz high pass filter and then press it again for the 150 Hertz high pass filter. I usually keep it at 75, but right now it's at 150. I'll go ahead and turn it to 75. And right now it is at 75 Hertz for the high pass filter. All right, so while I was editing, I realized that I didn't test the microphone while it was like, not using the high pass filter. I guess like putting it at 150, it removes a lot of the bass in your voice and that's not what you would want. So I'm assuming the 75 also does something similar. Um, let's go ahead and see if having no high pass filter on whatsoever would just make the sound better overall. Of course, it depends on your situation, but since right now I'm just in my living room, I guess, it shouldn't affect too much. So let's see if there's a big difference. So, after you have everything connected, the next step you wanna do is change your camera's audio recording level. So in order to do this for the Sony cameras, uh, the Sony Alpha cameras, all you gotta do is hit menu and then find something that says audio recording level. I'll go ahead and display how to find that. Click on it and then you wanna reduce it to somewhere around, I set it to 10, but I know some people set it to like five or even one. I think 10 is fine. I, I've gotten decent results with 10, so I just set it at 10. And then from there, you wanna increase the gain knob on your DD mic. I usually keep it around eight, and the levels that you see from there are pretty good. One of the main reasons for doing this is because the camera's preamplifiers are not as good as the actual mic's preamplifiers themselves. If you don't really understand what that means, the simple explanation is that every microphone needs a preamplifier to make the microphone's captured sound, which is super small in volume, and it has to increase it using a preamplifier. And the preamplifier, if you use a good one, it will introduce less noise into the boosted sound. And that's why we did what we just did. So what you can do to optimize the DD mic even more is set the audio recording level to one and then max out the gain knob. So, so just turn it all the way up to 10. Right now I'm talking to the microphone with these settings and you guys can compare to my other setup, which is audio recording levels set to 10 and then the DD mic set to around uh, like seven to eight, depending on how far you are uh, from the mic. One of the main reasons I don't set it to one is because I did that at some point and there was an occasion where I didn't have my camera mounted microphone and then it recorded and you basically cannot hear anything um, from the camera mic if it's set to one. So setting it to 10, you can still hear stuff from the camera mic um, just in case you don't have your shotgun microphone. But as long as you have your shotgun microphone always on your camera, then you can set it to one no problem. But yeah, that is how you optimize the audio with your camera and the mic. And that is pretty much all you need to do to use the microphone. In fact, you probably didn't have to do the last step. It's just a way of fine tuning your audio. 
All right, let's get to whether or not you should buy this microphone. I'll go ahead and display a specs chart for you guys to see, just in case you're curious about the specs. But generally, you'll be able to hear how the microphone sounds and you have the price point as well. So it's really up to you whether or not you think it sounds good and whether or not it's worth that price. So the number one question you wanna ask yourself if you're buying a microphone is what are you gonna use it for? If you're planning on using this for vlogging, in that case, it's pretty good because it comes with a case. And not only that, it's pretty small and easy to fit it within a bag. The wiring is also super clean and the hot shoe mount for the most part does a decent job keeping the mic in place. Although I will say I've used this mic for like mm, about I'd say two, three years now. And there have been occasions where it completely fell off. So I'd say you probably should re-tighten it every time that you move around with it. But like I mentioned, I've been using the microphone for two to three years and you can also use this as a boom microphone for some of your recordings. I actually did this last year. A couple of my videos used the DD mic as a boom microphone in place of like something else. I've gotten actual boom microphones now, which are actually better, of course, because they're actually meant for that reason. So that's why I say you gotta ask yourself, in what cases are you gonna use this microphone? Because I do think it's best for vlogs where you go out with your camera, hold it and sort of like have the microphone there. So if your main objective is to record in an indoor space where the microphone will probably be in the same place all the time, you probably wanna get a boom microphone instead. But if you're planning on getting a more versatile microphone that isn't as high quality sound as a dedicated boom microphone, I think the DD mic is your choice. I'll go ahead and show you guys some examples in a setting that isn't just me talking in front of this camera, uh, like two feet away um, right now. What up guys, we are testing the DD mic right now. I'm just walking across this park on its field. It's not really windy right now. It was sort of windy earlier, but you can sort of just hear how it sounds. Uh, okay, now there's the wind. Um, yeah, this is just an outdoor test for the Deity mic. Let's see how it sounds overall. I'm gonna just uh, increase my pace a little bit and run a little bit. Not sure how many cases you would use that in, but let's try it. Okay, now I'm running a little bit, and I guess this will help test the shock mount. Let's just see how it sounds while, while I run a bit. Wasn't expecting to do this today. How was your day, guys? Let me know in the comments below. All right. Okay, during that test, the I was looking at the meters for the audio levels and it looked like it was clipping because of the wind. So I just turned down the gain to somewhere around six. Uh, let's see if it makes it sound any better. And the wind just got real strong, so maybe it might clip again. All right, so let's talk about some unique properties of this camera mounted shotgun microphone. So one thing I love about the DD mic is the gain knob. Most other shotgun microphones that I've encountered don't have this. They usually have like a minus 10 decibels or plus 10 or plus 20 decibels um, like switch. And in a lot of cases that's gonna work fine, but I just like the ability to fine tune the audio level to pretty much exactly where I want it to be with the gain knob wheel. And another thing that I really like about this shotgun mic is that it has its own internal battery that lasts a pretty darn long time. I, I barely even charge this thing, even though I use it a good amount. So the charge port is a USB-C connection, so it makes it very easy for me to just charge it with pretty much anything around, like my laptop charger. And it charges pretty darn fast. All right, and the last part of this is gonna be my sound quality ranking for this microphone. So basically, out of all the microphones I've used and the ones that I sort of want in the future, I'm gonna rank it based off of that. So a one will be a microphone that I pretty much will never use. I just think it, it, it sounds like the worst of the worst. A five is a microphone that has a passable sound that I'll use if it's like the only thing I have. And then a 10 would be the optimal microphone for that use case. So, you know, this use case is for vlogging pretty much. So listening back to the DD's audio quality, I definitely think that it's more than passable, but it's not quite the best of the best in my opinion, just because I've been spoiled with microphones that are, I don't know why I just bought them. They were kind of very expensive. So I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. I do think it has pretty darn good sound for a camera mounted microphone. And I'd be willing to use this microphone as like my main microphone if I didn't like splurge and buy other more expensive microphones. Like I think it could be your dedicated mic, like no problem if you're doing YouTube. 
Um, of course, there are better mics if you're doing voiceover, there are better mics if you want it to be a boom mic, and there are better mics if you're going for a podcast. But if you're going for vlogs and just like talking to the camera type of videos, this works pretty darn well. So what is the verdict? Should you buy this microphone? I give this microphone a big yes. After spending about two to three years with it, I still use it like for talking to the camera and I plan on using it more as I go out after, you know, COVID is dying down and whatnot. So if you're looking for a camera mounted microphone, I definitely give this a thumbs up. But don't forget guys, editing is a big part of making your audio sound good. That's why I created a Skillshare course around enhancing dialogue audio. So if you guys are curious about that, I'll leave a link down below. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments whether or not you are planning on buying this microphone or if you already own it. I do wanna give a shout out to my friend Harji. He's the one who actually recommended me this microphone a couple years ago, and that's the reason I have it. So thanks Harji. But there are a lot of camera mounted microphones out there. So if you guys feel like there's a better one at this price point, let us know in the comments below. We're all here to help each other, keep each other informed, as well as equipped to create. Best of luck with your projects. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.